Shri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the Supreme God incarnate. Let us pray to Him to lead us from the unreal to the real, to lead us from darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. Today I am speaking on very important topic which is very interesting. After coming in contact with Sri Ramakrishna, after receiving his divine name, after going through his most fascinating practical spiritual instructions. I am speaking on this subject. I hope whoever is seeking God should be able to follow these steps if he wants to attain God. It is not difficult but you have to act upon practically, seriously. So the subject of today, six steps to attain God. I have tried to pinpoint what exactly we should have to practice. Very important and every step is as important as the next one. Each one is great. Each one has to be followed meticulously. It's a great achievement to attain God. Remarkable achievement. But people talk loosely. I have seen many people, sometimes they come to talk with me for interview. They ask in a very casual way, have you seen God? As if it is child's play. First of all, live the life properly. The realization of God is a fruit. The tree has to grow nicely in a healthy way. The leaves should be healthy. The flowers should be healthy. The tree should be healthy. Then, certainly you will get the the very best fruit. You have to take very careful steps to maintain the health at all levels. So, if you come to practical aspect of life, how miserable we are. The reason is not difficult to find out. If you cannot find out we can point out the reasons. But the way to go in the path lies in each one of you. If you have to follow the path properly, you must reach the goal of the journey. So, the first step that is required, this step is required everywhere, but I am 
speaking it is more important most important when you come to spiritual life the first step is dhrida nischaya what a fine words dhrida nischaya that means you must have firm determination then only enter into spiritual life simply talking loosely and uh, not uh, conducting oneself properly how can you expect any spiritual unfoldment so you have to test yourself are you sure are you sure you want to realize god are you want god to dance with you you want something he must be favorable to you if he is not then you are angry with god you want to bargain with god of course you will not say no to a devotee who wants some favor to be done to him well he gives everything but himself if you want god you have to love him very important first of all you must decide whether you want to realize god that is a very important that's a very important question then only everything will follow well i hope at least those who come to vedanta they have the desire whatever may be the reasons for not uh, attaining god at least they want to reach god to see god at least they have found out it's only coming to god one could get real peace or happiness in this world otherwise not well that's why it's very important you must be constantly associated with the spiritual ideas and the people who are practicing spiritual life is very important association very very important so vedanta you you taste vedanta when you become serious about it otherwise you, you will not have any taste so dhrida nischaya firm determination you will have to act with firm determination to realize god you must be always be aware of this point this step always till you realize god this determination should be with you please mind that not that i will have determination only for certain period of time otherwise it is not necessary no until you see god face to face this determination must go to that extent swami shivananda ji one of the disciples of sri ramakrishna they are all gems 16 disciples 16 gems i don't know how to describe if you read them if you understand what they are talking what they are teaching you will be thrilled said they came to our level they underwent all suffering though they don't have to suffer only to show that we don't have to despair on account of suffering we don't have to lose faith in god on the other hand we should instill faith in god on account of suffering on account of all these disturbances around us so he is telling he is teaching us your determination should be such make a start from this very day not tomorrow or day after tomorrow not not after uh, some years of my younger days uh, let me pass let me about 50 years after when i reach the middle age let me think no 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 if you come to sri ramakrishna philosophy there is no question of procrastination no question of postponement whatever done is done forget about what is done think of today how much you are seeking god how much you are firm about your determination that's very important in your spiritual journey first of all you must set the goal are you sure about realizing god are you sure that your your life is set for that it begins from that point if you're not sure then no steps 
you will be able to climb up so swami shivananda ji very emphatically says make a start from this very day time is flying delay is debasing what a wonderful statement time is flying delay is debasing nobody can say when one will have to call for departure so don't waste a single day these are the words of swami shivananda ji i am just telling his own words so those who think that these things can be put off for the future never do anything they will be tossed to this current of birth and death indefinitely there is no end to it keep on going back and forth the swami warns that don't expect speedy result just because you have entered into spiritual life it doesn't mean that instantly you must have all the experiences it cannot happen that way one has to go on persevering in the path day after day month after month year after year with the same determination don't forget that dhrida nischaya that's why i'm using the word sanskrit word it's easy to remember dhrida nischaya one has to make spiritual efforts what is wanted is intensity yearning and sincerity once you have the yearning in your mind success is near at hand see the life of lord buddha what firm determination he had after years of searching he finally sat under a tree with a firm determination to realize god then and there or die in the attempt he will never get up until he get that experience with such strong determination he sat through under the tree finally he got illumination that firm determination is what is needed another great disciple i am just charm to dwell upon the teachings of these great teachers marvelous swami turiyananda ji he says clench your fists and say i will conquer now or never make that your motto even in this life i must see god that's the only way never postpone what you know to be right do that and do that at once don't let any chance go by remember this life is for the strong the persevering and always be on your guard never give in every sentence every word is important if you are seeking god if you want to attain god so don't complain about circumstances they may or may not be favorable but don't care you must strain every nerve to accomplish the thing if you are determined to do it at any cost you will find that great obstacles which you thought would overpower you ultimately turn out to help you the obstacles are coming to help you not to hinder your progress see the fun it all depends upon how you are determined in your pursuit it follows you must struggle struggle sincerely does one find circumstances always propitious consider what you have got to do as your duty and go on 
always remember you are undecaying and immortal you are potentially divine there is no death or birth to you all these things are happening on account of the darkness of ignorance so why should you go about seeking favorable circumstances it is you who have projected all this and there's a famous example all of you know that once a man went to the seaside to bathe there he waits and waits thinking that he would plunge when the waves subside how can you expect the waves subside in the ocean it is nothing but foolishness will that moment ever come what's the wisest way to do instead of doing so plunge against the waves have your bath and come out that's the wisest way the sea remains always the same so in this world you must manage to call upon the lord in the midst of these waves it is a wild goose chase to be on the lookout for opportunities now or never apply yourself to it and disadvantages will turn into advantages it is true that rooting out tendencies is an uphill task but if one has the determination to say what if i have once done something wrong now i know what it is now i won't do it anymore if you have this conviction then you can get through if you take refuge in the lord with a firm determination that you won't do it again in that case all the sins done previously will be forgiven they will be forgiven if god had not that quality of forgiveness probably would have we would have to suffer eternally so much sins we have done and we are doing we will have to suffer eternally for all the sins what we have done but god is gracious he takes away all our sins you must know only how to approach him how to reach him that's all he wants nothing from you he just wants to be sure you are loving him that's all so what is needed is you must not play the hypocrite if you want your all sins to be washed away you must not be hypocrite then all the world sins if you are hypocrite then all the world sins will come down upon you and exact their dues exact their dues with compound interest you must know that so one should have great determination so it means you must control the mind and not allow the mind to control you the best period of your life is slipping by it won't return it won't return but if you practice you will see for yourself that within a few days a change will come over you everything will become clear everything will become easy what we call samskaras they will establish themselves they will establish themselves why we keep on telling please come be associated read spiritual text every day repeat divine's name god's name do prayers do worship do it regularly we keep on telling that it's only to establish good impressions in your mind start now tell yourself i shall do it be a determined spiritual aspirant say either i succeed in the practice of repeating god's holy name or i shall die in the attempt he should have such determination it's only those who have that firm determination get success in whatever endeavors there is a beautiful story shri ramakrishna has said about the significance of firm determination it is in the gospel 
the person of firm determination will never say i shall complete it by and by i am about to take it up i am going to begin this he never entered times a procrastinating mood the person of fiery determination pants after god as a mother's heart does for her child he wants nothing except god such a person never thinks let me first settle my family affairs and then i shall meet it on god the story which shri ram krishna is telling there is a drought in a certain part of the country the crops are failing they need urgently water so the farmers began to cut long channels to connect the field with the water one farmer was firmly determined he took a vow that he would not stop digging until the channel connected his field with the river so he set to work he is digging and digging he has finished about uh, 25% of digging still 75% is to be done to connect it to the water to connect it to the river but then the time is going up the time came for his bath and the wife uh, sent their daughter to him with oil the girl came to the father and uh, the girl is telling it's getting late why don't you take bath rub this rub your body with the oil take bath the child is coming and telling the father the farmer who was digging the earth he, he was not in a mood to talk he was not in a mood even to look at her though he loved his daughter very much at that point of time he never wanted to deviate his attention to anything else so he just simply ordered her to get away he didn't say anything he told in such a way the girl ran away from the place his task was not finished much had to be done still it was past midday the farm is still doing work at the field he not thinking about anything else then the wife herself came she wanted to remind him about taking the food so she came very courageously probably daughter could not talk to him i can talk so she wanted to assert her partnership she is a life partner you know she can talk <laughs> so she, she went boldly and she is talking why haven't you taken your bath food is getting cold you always do overdo things your nature is to overdo you can finish the rest tomorrow or even today after dinner take the dinner and then come and do the work what does it matter of course for her it doesn't matter <laughs> is only farmer he knows the seriousness of the thing the farmer at that point he never considered uh, his wife was talking to him as i said earlier his whole attention was on digging how fast he could connect his field with the river so he scolded her furiously not only that he ran at her spade in hand and he shouted at her what do you have any sense there is no rain the crops are dying what will the children eat you will have to starve to death you must know i have taken a vow not to think of bath or food before i bring water to my field and the wife saw for the first time how his how her husband's face looked like so the whole blood was rushing on the face the whole constitution had become red she could not stand that she simply ran away no 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 this is not the time to talk to him so she went away whole day he worked very hard then he managed to connect his field with the river the 
then he felt supremely satisfied. This thing could happen on account of his firm determination. Dhrana nishchayaha. I am telling this again and again so that even if you go home, you should not forget this. Swamiji said, Dhrana nishchayaha. Other things you may forget, but this aphorism, you should not Dhrana nishchayaha. So I am again and again telling to imprint in your subtle body. It should go deep and stay and stay there so that you can use it when you want it. So he was very happy, the field was connected, he was full of joy, he was peaceful. Then he came to home and he called his wife very affectionately. He had not shown that affection any time before like that. He was so his wife was so tender, so loving, and he's asking her. Now please come, give whatever you want, I am ready to take. And he had his bath, he had his uh, dinner, lunch could not, he could not take because lunch time was over. <laughs> then he snored to his heart's content, deep snoring. First time he had that kind of uh, deep sleep, all this was on account of his stubborn determination. Now, Sri Ramakrishna tells this story how nice it is. There is another farmer. He was also digging. He wanted to connect his field to the river. Uh, in the same way, his wife also came and she was asking her husband to come and take bath, take food, it's getting late and so on and this farmer did not protest much so what he did was he put aside his spade and then said to his wife well I will go home since you asked me to that man never succeeded in irrigating his field see one farmer got his field connected with river, the other one could not. One was firmly determined, so he could get the result. The other one was vacillating. No firm determination, he could not accomplish anything. So, seeking God, to seek God, you have to have firm determination. That's the first step I am telling you. Probably I may take another half an hour more to explain this first step itself. Doesn't matter, next Sunday I will continue the same topic if necessary. If I am not finishing, I am not able to finish, I think. <laughs> well, so one must have stern determination. Then alone is spiritual practice possible. So one must make a firm resolve. There is great power in the seed of God's name. Seed of God's name? Yes, seed of God's name. That's what we give in initiation. We give divine name of the Lord and that is a seed that contains everything. It destroys your ignorance. You must know a seed is tender and the sprout soft, still it pierces the hard ground. If you notice how the seed works in the earth, the ground breaks and makes way for the sprout. Through firm determination, one should perform spiritual disciplines, then he can fix his mind on God by repeated efforts. He should be able to do that. So that is the first step. Have firm determination. Now I am going to second step. Second step is nisprahaha. Of course, uh, the meaning is very simple. Probably it appears difficult if you are not firmly determined. See? So firm determination you must have. Dhrana nischeha plus nispraha. So I am combining. You have to have Dhrana nischeha as your companion in your spiritual pursuit. What is nispraha? To be free from desire. It is very tough, I know. But there is a way of understanding this. How one should free himself from desires. Sri Ramakrishna has said in the Gospel, one must set fire 
to one's desires, setting fire to one's desires, then alone can one succeed. These are the words of Sri Ramakrishna. So, it is desires that are responsible for all suffering. Suppose you are suffering, you analyze yourself in your mind, why that suffering has come? What is the root? Finally, you will come to know it is on account of some desire. It resulted in this way. Sri Ramakrishna explains this through a simile. In villages, the farmers bring water into their paddy fields. The fields have low ridges on all sides to prevent the water from leaking out. But you know, those are made of mud. Often, they have holes here and there. The farmers, they work so hard to bring the water, but it leaks out through the holes. And now, desires are the holes. Desires are the holes. You practice japa, you practice worship, you practice meditation, you practice prayers and uh, you come to Vedanta every day, you do voluntary service, all these things are true. But they all leak out through the holes of your desires. Desires overpower you. See the fun. Again Sri Ramakrishna gives another example. So beautiful. In Bengal side it's very common. People catch fish with a bamboo trap, bamboo, bamboo tree, you, you know, you are familiar with bamboo tree. It's very, uh, you can make a straight uh, strips out of that. The bamboo is naturally straight, but why is it bent in the trap in order to catch the fish? Desires are the fish. Therefore, the mind is bent down toward the world. Mind is bent down. If there are no desires, the mind naturally looks up towards God. Bamboo is naturally straight, but it is bent to catch the fish. So, it is terrible temptations of pleasures that makes one stray from the path of yoga. Just observe the flame of a candle. The slightest wind makes it waver. The state of yoga is like the candle flame in a windless place. As you entangle yourself more and more in worldly occupations, what happens? The mind is dispersed in various directions. That mind is to be gathered in. It must be concentrated on one object. The desire for devotion or spiritual knowledge should not be classified under desires. You may desire it and pray for it. Sri Ramakrishna in another place has said in the Gospel, as long as there is bhoga, there will be less of yoga. Furthermore, bhoga begets suffering. In Bhagavata, there is a story the kite, eagle, you can say, it had a fish in its beak. Immediately it was surrounded by 1,000 crows. 1,000. Because this also Sri Ramakrishna has said in the Gospel. Whichever way the bird flew with the fish, the crows pursued it. They were chasing the eagle. At the same time they were crying, ka, 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 like that. 1,000 crows crying like that. Anybody would become mad. Anybody. So that means all these cows are bothering the eagle. It, it could not do anything. In that confusion what happened, suddenly the fish dropped away. Immediately the crows left the eagle and flew after the fish, leaving the eagle alone. Now, this fish is the object of enjoyment. The crows who are these crows? 1,000 crows? Who are these? They are worries and anxiety. They are crows. If you, if you want to have a pleasure, be ready to have the crow bite. Worries and anxiety are inevitable with pleasures, enjoyment of the world. No sooner does one give up enjoyment, he is no more bothered 
and finds peace shri ramachandra there is a story in ramayana vishwamitra had taken ram and lakshman uh, in order to give training in archery and also he wanted them to guard uh, his hermitage while doing yagna anyway vishwamitra rishi knew very well that rama is not an ordinary human being he knew very well that shri ramachandra was the lord of the universe he knew very well that and he knew why he had been incarnated as shri ramachandra so vishwamitra was fully aware of the divinity of shri ramachandra so he told him oh ram please come we shall have to go to one hermitage here so they went to gautam maharshi's hermitage there was a huge rock so vishwamitra brought rama by the side of that rock while walking shri rama's lotus feet touched the rock immediately the rock exploded exploding what happened a fine being came out of that she was ahalya the wife of gautam rishi and she was in that state of rock on account of some something happened there's a story well once she was touched by rama she was thoroughly purified as i said earlier all her sins are dosha we say impurities they were all washed away without a trace there is not a trace of impurity she was perfectly pure and gautam rishi was supremely happy to see do you want anything you can ask for shri ram himself is asking without her asking him he himself is offering well i am ready to give whatever you want to do you want anything then ahalya said oh ramachandra i am overwhelmed by seeing you please fulfill my desire that i may always meditate on your lotus feet even though i may be born in a pig's body because she became fully aware of the glory of shri ramas as long as a man desires the things of the world it is not possible for him to have any earnest desire to know god again there is an analogy as long as a child is absorbed in his toys he forgets his mother but as soon as he tires of them he cries for her mother and the child is not happy till it sees the mother similarly when a man tires of the playthings of the world then his heart yearns for god and he struggles with all his mind with all his will power to find him so i am brahmananda ji another direct disciple of shri ramakrishna said effort must be your motto if you want to grow spiritually keep watch over every small desire which arises keep watch over that and what then what you should do control it don't give way to the desires you have to start controlling it if you say i can't control all right be ready to suffer you will be able to control it provided you have climbed the first step properly that is firm determination if you have firmly determined that you must realize god now or never if you have that determination then it should not be difficult for you to control your desires so when you sit for meditation you must think desires for worldly things what are these desires they they just bother me they are worthless so you must initiate such kind of thoughts 
in your mind to discourage the play of those desires in your mind this will leave a good impression on the mind as you drive away the desires from your mind good thoughts and feelings will come up another direct disciple swami premananda ji said let strong wind of dispassion rise in your minds that the trees of desire be uprooted then even as birds fly from the shelter of trees before a strong wind will the ignorance of selfishness jealousy hatred and egoism take flight from your hearts so long as there is the least desire the mind cannot be absorbed in god which i am taking up in the next step it comes absorption man maya that is the another step that is required to seek god man maya means absorption in god you can't get that absorption if you have desire in the mind if you allow the desire in your mind if you are yielding to desire then you can't seek god so along with meditation and repetition of lord's name you must reason keenly and carefully you must search out the desires hiding in the dark corners of the mind dark corners of the mind and drive them away this is what is called in the bhagavad gita as saving the self by the self uddare atmanatmanam darsi meaning of that verse saving the self by the self you have to drive away all the desires from the mind then only you can save your mind otherwise mind will shave you you cannot save it it will shave you shave so we are to conquer the mind then we shall find peace everlasting with an ourselves and that's the stage very near to reach god sant tulsi das has also said where rama the lord of the universe is there there is no kama desire and where there is kama desire there rama is not both never coexist like the sun and darkness when there is sun there is no darkness when there is darkness there is no sun there It's just like that if one doesn't want sense enjoyment if one hates the approach of any thought of it in the mind of their own accord will all desires for sense objects fly away that means the thoughts may come up in the mind but don't give attention to them that's the meaning suppose you don't like the company of a particular individual what do you do you don't talk to him and in that way you are showing your dislike towards him and that fellow will understand oh he is not caring for me he is not even looking at me he is he is showing some kind of uh, dislike for me why should i go to him anymore then he drops himself one succeeds in driving away the desires for sense enjoyments if only one makes an effort for that it is because we cling to the sense objects the desire for them does not leave us we are allowing the mind to hang on so we are hanging ourselves a thread with stray fibers cannot pass through the eye of the needle similarly a mind with desires cannot be absorbed in god worldly desires have taken up permanent residence in the mind sometimes they float on the surface of the mind and sometimes they are so hidden that it seems they do not even exist but the closer you are to god the more you will see the knots of desire hidden in the mind the more your body and mind are purified the more the dirt and dross which have accumulated during thousands of lives will be stirred up and will challenge your spirituality they will challenge you the energy generated by spiritual disciplines 
forces the impurities to leave the mind immediately how can they cope up against the power of the lord's name so that's why we say the power of the divine lord's name is immense only have to repeat god's name with love and devotion with firm determination with firm faith in him that i am repeating his name in order to see him i am calling him what is the meaning of repeating his name i am calling on him why i am calling because i have not seen him once i see him the calling will stop so keep calling till you see him that's the meaning of telling constantly call him the desires are very shrewd they take possession not only of the mind of a person but his sense organs as well as soon as desire is aroused in the mind the sense objects are awakened the eyes want to see the ears want to hear the tongue wants to taste and speak the nose wants to smell the body wants to feel the hands want to work and the feet carry the person to where the object is all these things are happening the other sense organs are alert and whenever the opportunity comes they also enjoy do you know what the mind does it conjures up enticing pictures with the imagination the imagination is man's worst enemy his greatest tempter for it creates beautiful pictures of sense pleasures and nearly destroys one's conscience thus one is drawn to sense objects therefore if you want to control the desire for worldly things control the imagination and don't be deluded by sense objects one who has learned to discriminate can successfully overcome lust and greed so cultivate your discrimination and conscience how can you struggle against evil tendencies if your intellect is not trained to differentiate between good and evil so first clear out the rubbish which has entered the mind through the gates of the sense organs and then put a sign no admittance in front of each gate those bad thoughts which ignore the notice and still come in you will have to hand over them to the police who is the police your conscience is the police with the help of the police you must evict the impure tendencies from the mind and then install the lord there this is the way to conquer lust and desire desire begets wants in the mind of a person if he has no desires he has no wants love for god Desi- destroys desires if you are running temperature what will happen everything tastes bitter you don't like sweets even so so long as you have the desire to enjoy worldly things you can have no taste for prayer meditation fasts and vigils all taste bitter when this worldly fever subsides prayer meditation etc they taste sweet the mind settles quickly to them temptation cannot sweep you off your feet another great disciple swami abhedananda said desire are of two kinds good and bad when desires are associated with selfishness they are bad but when desires are motiveless or selfless they are good anger greed jealousy these spring from bad desires and they harm the people virtue and vice arise from desires one can have no peace so long as one is a slave to desires peace means the conquest of desires and the way to the conquest of desires is through doing good to others striving for the welfare of others 
What makes the mind impure? Another direct disciple, Ramakrishnanji, has said, it is desire that makes the mind impure. Free the mind of all desires, and at once it becomes pure. The lover of God sees that instead of bringing enjoyment, these desires are the source of all miseries. He understands that in God alone he can find the satisfaction of all desires for his infinite bliss and all other pleasures are finite and perishable. Mind is compared to a big mirror which gives a perfect reflection but which has been so thickly covered with dirt that nothing can be seen in it. The more you can rub off that dirt, the more you will be able to see yourself in it. The more you can remove the least speck of dust, the more you can get a perfect image of your true self. What is that dirt that hides the image? Selfish desires. I am again and again touching this point desire so that you must know how the desire is playing havoc with us. How you should be very careful about controlling your desires. Desire is a very dangerous thing. Sometimes we think we have killed all selfish desires. But somewhere in our mind there lingers some remnant. And as from a spark left in the corner of the hearth may come again a big fire. So out of that small remnant may spring a huge fire of desire. Someone asked a question to the Swami. See, God is all powerful, He is all loving, kind and compassionate. Could He not free us from ignorance at once if He wished? Swami said, Surely, but He is so infinitely loving, He does not wish to interfere with. So long as He sees that we really cling to our ignorance and our desires, He does not come to free us. Only when we turn all our desires to Him, then He comes and selfishness and ignorance go away. But we must not bribe the mind, we must not pretend to be free from desires. The feeling must be absolutely sincere, no fraud or bribery. Desires cannot be quenched by satisfaction, but by dissociation. The more one yields to them, the more they will burn him. When desires are extinguished, perfection which is within our being will be revealed. That's how the Swamiji said. Another Swamiji, Swami Shardanandaji, he said, conflicting desires arise in the mind. Because of these desires, the mind is constantly lashed into waves. As long as these waves form, the mind is restless. In order to control these waves, which give rise to thoughts of a worldly and distracting nature, one must live a life of self-discipline. After death, worldly desires continue to remain in a subtle form. Don't think when you die everything is finished. People have that, some people at least they have that notion. It is not true. Death only destroys the gross body. But the senses, mind and intelligence, they all remain in a subtle form. In that subtle body, sense enjoyments are all the more acute. After the subtle state comes the causal state. Even then the mind and other phenomena exist in the form of seed. In the supramental state only, one attains perfect illumination. So it is not enough therefore to strive for physical development only. What is needed is an all-round advancement, physical, mental and spiritual. So what is the cause of rebirth? It is desire. If you get rid of all desires, you will not be born again. For instance, the Swamiji said, Swami Vigyanandaji, if I set anything in motion by pushing it with force, it will keep moving so long as it has got the momentum. If it is not pushed further, it will certainly stop moving sometime or other. 
the cycle of birth and death continues because we give it a new impetus in every birth but if we stop giving it a new impetus that is if we overcome our desires we will have no further rebirths so out of six steps i have covered only two steps today the remaining four steps are there for you to come next sunday to what i mean next month i think next month must speak must speak and of course i'll just give the uh, in nutshell what are the other steps the third step bhagwan says in the gita vitaraga bhaya krodha that is uh, one should uh, be free from attachment fear and anger that's important step if you have to seek god i'm just giving the idea i will explain it in the next sunday class next month the fourth step is man maya that means the mind should absorb in the divine form the fifth step is mam upashitaha vitaraga bhaya krodha man maya mam upashitaha mam upashitaha means to take refuge in him he is everything i am nothing if you are established in that idea certainly you will see god and the last step what lord krishna has specified jnana tapasa puta that is knowledge and penance one gets purified when all these steps are tread upon then they come to me vitaraga bhaya krodha man maya ma mupashita ha bhavo jnana tapasa puta madbhava magata chapter 4 verse number 10 so these are the steps because i have already told all these six steps and let us be uh, very tedious in practicing them the first step is very important if you take the first step properly then you will be able to take other steps very easily if there is wrong in taking the first step then you will collapse what is the first step dhrana nischaya firm determination thank you